The epic booster catch performance in Flight 5 was, without a doubt, an undeniable victory for SpaceX. Now that you've had a moment to catch your breath after that incredible rocket recovery, let's take a closer look at the aftermath of this outstanding performance. Yes, Starship's Flight 5 has achieved a resounding success. SpaceX hit all of its objectives for both stages of the vehicle with flying colors. Both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship spacecraft executed flawless landings at their intended locations, showcasing the incredible precision and control of the system. And by successfully accomplishing what no one has ever done on the first try, SpaceX has shaken the world and left all its competitors far behind in the space race. Even the FAA confirmed on Saturday that SpaceX had met all safety, environmental, and other licensing requirements for this fifth suborbital test flight of Starship. But that's not all. The FAA has also approved the mission profile for Starship 6. Everyone's attention was really on the booster catch attempt, so let's dive deeper into the events and the aftermath. The flight had a great start. The liftoff and passage through Max-Q were smooth, delivering a breathtaking spectacle. The engine system performed flawlessly, moving into the stage separation, one of the most critical moments of the flight. All six engines of the upper stage fired up simultaneously, creating a stunning spectacle as they pushed the Super Heavy Booster away. A notable detail during this phase was the effect on the grid fins of the Super Heavy Booster. In the few seconds when Starship's engines ignited, producing extreme heat, we could observe a slight warping on the grid fin visible on camera. This wasn't a result of lens distortion or atmospheric effects, but rather thermal expansion at the center area of the grid fins due to the intense heat. However, this wasn't a cause for concern. The grid fins continued to function effectively, perfectly guiding and stabilizing the booster during its re-entry into the atmosphere. SpaceX clearly anticipated and accounted for this minor deformation in the design phase, ensuring it wouldn't impact performance. The grid fins are made of stainless steel, similar to the rest of the rocket. During this current testing phase, when there's still a high risk of the booster falling into the Gulf of Mexico, SpaceX has wisely opted not to invest in more expensive, durable materials for the grid fins. This approach saves costs and avoids wasting valuable resources in case of any incidents. It's the same strategy SpaceX followed with the Falcon 9's development. Only after proving the safe and reliable landing capability of Falcon 9 did they transition to grid fins cast from titanium, one of the largest objects ever cast from a solid block of titanium. Now let's get back to the Super Heavy Booster's journey after separating from Starship. First, 13 Raptor engines in the inner ring of the booster were ignited. Afterward, these engines were carefully shut down in a controlled sequence. Next, the cold gas thrusters were activated. These are small thrusters that use compressed gas to generate precise thrust, allowing for fine adjustments to the booster's direction and trajectory. They play a crucial role in guiding Super Heavy back to its intended landing site. Look at this. When Super Heavy falls back to Earth, it looks like a giant burning cigarette. But here's the thing. There are no engines firing at that moment. So why does it glow bright red like that? Well, Super Heavy is falling much faster than the Falcon 9 booster. When a massive object like that moves through the atmosphere at extreme speeds, it generates enormous friction and heat. This phenomenon is known as entry heating. The combination of high speed and friction with the atmosphere creates intense pressure and heat around the booster, especially near the engine section. It's likely that the heat shielding inside the engine area is burning due to the extremely high temperatures. At T plus 630 of the flight, the landing burn begins. 13 Raptor engines ignite to slow down the booster. Since the booster is falling straight down, all of the thrust and heat from the 13 engines is concentrated in a confined space right below the rocket, creating an incredibly harsh thermal environment. The massive heat from the engines isn't just spreading outwards, it's also being pushed back toward the rocket. This phenomenon, known as heat reflection, or plume impingement, creates enormous pressure and heat on the lower structure of the booster. In some camera angles, you can actually see pressure waves right above the launch tower. At this point, the Super Heavy booster is still incredibly heavy, weighing around 240 tons. The combination of these factors creates such an extreme environment that it actually causes some deformation to the engine nozzles. Elon Musk even shared on X. A few outer engine nozzles are warped from heating and some other minor issues, but these are easily addressed. This isn't a complete surprise to SpaceX engineers. We've seen similar deformations on Booster 11 when SpaceX recovered it from the ocean after Flight 4. These engines are from the second-generation Raptor, and I'm confident that this issue will be resolved with Raptor 3. Just seconds after the landing burn began, another notable event occurred. Cameras captured pieces of steel peeling off the rocket, creating a hole in the booster's body, and we could actually see flames burning through this hole 
Pole, a visually striking yet somewhat alarming sight. Once Flight 5 was over, more detailed images were released, allowing us to pinpoint the exact location of the breach. It was found in one of the four Chinese of the rocket. While this is certainly damage, the flight was still a success, suggesting that no critical hardware inside the booster was severely harmed. This is good news because it means most of the booster's key systems and structure remained intact. And of course, we were treated to the spectacular landing of the super heavy booster on the launch tower's chopstick system. The landing process was incredibly smooth and precise, creating a scene that almost felt unreal. It's hard to believe that the object, which just slowed down and landed so gently, stood at 71 meters tall and weighed around 240 tons. The chopstick system, or Mechazilla arms, worked flawlessly. The shock absorbers on both arms performed excellently, absorbing much of the impact as the booster made contact, preserving the structural integrity of the valuable hardware. Even though the arms themselves weigh over 80 tons and controlling the force is no small feat, there was no heavy slap that could have crushed the booster. The smooth coordination between between the booster's movement and the catching arms is the result of a complex control algorithm, constantly calculating and adjusting based on real-time data. Shortly after the successful landing, as the temperature dropped, we could see frost forming on the booster's surface, a telltale sign of the remaining fuel inside. Considering the entire journey the booster went through, from pushing Starship to its intended altitude to executing the landing maneuvers, it essentially used up nearly all of its fuel. The frost, however, suggests there might be more. I'm not entirely sure if it's really leftover fuel or maybe some slosh phenomenon at play. If you had to choose only one word to describe this booster catch, what would it be? Currently, Booster B-12 has been lowered from the orbital launch mount, OLM, and moved back to the Mega Bay, SpaceX's technical facility. The next step is for the engineers to conduct a full inspection, evaluating the overall condition of the booster and identifying areas most affected by the flight. After the initial assessments, it's likely that SpaceX will open up the booster to examine the internal hardware, especially the Raptor engines. Material samples from different sections of the booster will be analyzed to assess the impact of the extreme heat and pressure. And I believe that part of Booster B-12 might be preserved and put on display as a tribute to mark a significant milestone in SpaceX's development journey. With this success, the company has become the first space company to recover a booster stage successfully on the very first attempt. It ushered in a new era of reusability by landing rockets without landing legs and became the leading private space company. Not only did the Super Heavy booster demonstrate impressive power, but its companion spacecraft, Starship, also had a dramatic and successful journey. Following the IFT-4 test flight, SpaceX made a series of significant improvements to both stages of the launch system, and the IFT-5 flight showcased the effectiveness of the these upgrades. Is there a specific aspect you'd like me to analyze? Please comment below. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.